Hello, 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 and uh, welcome to another episode of the Expert to Authority show. And today we are here with the one and only Ian Philip James, uh, aka the person who sorts me out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the the official title. Um, now I, I'm excited about this interview with Ian for a few reasons. Uh, Rian has been my personal coach for a number of years now, and I wouldn't have not be where I am now without him. And that's why we decided to collaborate and uh, create also a podcast interview to talk about different things. So we're going to talk about you know how you can how accountability really works. Uh, to get the most important things done. We're going to talk about as well how I was able to overcome one of the darkest period of my life and the work that we did to make that happen. And also we will talk about uh, how do we maintain. So once things get better, how do you actually keep playing a bigger game, which is the current work that uh, I'm doing with him at the moment. So kind of guide you through this journey of the work that I did with you over the years, because I'm sure that depending on where you are, there are going to be parts of this journey that you can resonate with. And then if you like what you see, then at the end, you can uh, reach out and see how you can as well work with Ian. So if that's something, if you resonate with with this particular interview. So Ian, welcome. Hey, how are you doing, Simone? Good to be here. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet each and every one of you, even though I haven't met you in person yet. But hi, yeah, here I am. So we started working together um, a year and a half, almost two years ago. Uh -huh. And the first program that I bought from you and the first start of our working relationship was a program that is called uh, Unboloxed, <laughs> which is the best name for a program ever, uh, which also was born uh, uh, during one of our seminars that we did years ago in a very funny way. So before even we go into the accountability, which is what we're going to talk in a moment, tell us the story of Unbolox because that's how I ended up working with you. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, thanks so much, Smelly. So Unbollox was kind of born completely organically. Uh, and my favorite thing in the world is when things just kind of unfold in a natural and organic way. And um, we were at a course that uh, GTX was running. And uh, we were kind of like talking about different ideas and brands. And, uh, and we were kind of like going through an exercise with the participants around what they would call their business. And I was just kind of sat at the back of the room and uh, chatting with a couple of the, the, the others and saying, like, Do you know what? I think I'd call a program unbollocked. Like, I think like so many people have just got things that are just bollocksing up their life that actually, why not just unbollox people? And we kind of like made this whole idea about it. And then it came to pitching and um, or, or like kind of like doing a test pitch for the products. And I said, Do you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to pitch the the idea of unbollocks. And we kind of like were giggling between ourselves. And, and it was all like a bit of a joke to sort of just so, show how you could make up anything. And um, and someone said, I like it. I'm like, oh, okay. And, um, and it was a bit of a joke. And then afterwards in the bar, we were just talking about it. And uh, a guy just said, I want in. How much? How much does it cost to, to, to join? And I just spat out, five euros and um, no five pounds and uh, the guy was Italian he just reached into his wallet and gave me five euros and to this day I still carry the um, the five euro note that uh, that I got for that and it was just the the birth and then really from there like we we tested it we we played around with it and stuff like that and then just kept talking about it and then more and more people kept saying yeah I want in I want a bit of that um, and then one day Simone said that he wanted in and um and well here we are so uh yeah that's that's the story of unbollocks and and it's here to stay apparently and there we are today now shout out to pino the first ever oh, unbollocks pino. client <laughs> uh which was surreal that day uh for context pino is one of my best friends from italy he came to see me and he happened to be on the day of the seminar and that's at the end we talked with ian here here he is taking out five euros from his pockets and working with ian and that's it's been literally the start of Unbolox. So I know Unbolox is a focus on uh, uh, a, a new level of accountability. And that's what I want to discuss today uh, as in the first part of this interview. What uh, made you design Unbolox in the way you have designed? And also if you can expand on 
what elements of accountability works and what other they don't work from your experience? Because I know you've studied and tested this topic in depth. You have a great methodology. That's why I decided to work with you. So let's start talking about accountability. Yeah, accountability is a really funny thing. Um, there's kind of two, there's two pathways or, or two elements toward self-improvement or getting to, to where you get to. One is the, the knowledge of how you go about doing that. So you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't know what you need to know, then you need to, to find help in order to do that. The other part is the implementation. And, and what I found is that in particularly in the self-development industry, um, there's, it's really, really weighted in the here's what you need to know element of the, um, of, of the equation, but not so much in the let's get you implementing it that. And, and in some respects, that's why the self-development uh, um, industry has got a bit of a reputation for being sort of full of snake oil and stuff because there's loads of knowledge that's shared. There's loads of tactics that's been shared. But then there's not very much that really supports people in integrating the knowledge that they've got into their, their everyday life. And, and often very commonly people hear the idea of that they can make a certain amount of money really, really quickly and, and, and so on. But then when they try to apply that in their hyper complicated life that might involve other human beings, other work commitments, um, children, animals that they have to look after, parents that they've got to take care of, houses that need repairs, like all of this stuff, um, it can be kind of quite overwhelming and exhausting. So we created the, the model around the accountability of like a kind of like bet system. So it's a really peculiar little model in that um, essentially there's like a, a get in fee, which says that like, if you want to take part in this, it's got to be worth your time and my time and, and, and so on and so forth. So like, this is the, the get in fee. And then people can either like pay up front and they can say like, no, I just want, someone to be accountable for and we're going to work through this stuff and, and we're going to get it done um or they can do what we call like which is a bet model uh which is basically they say i bet 10 pounds or 50 pounds or 100 pounds that these are the activities that i'm going to achieve in the next week or whichever period we choose and then we come back and then we examine that uh, and it's my job to like cross-examine it so that i can make sure that people are not lying to themselves that make sure that people are not putting excuses in the way and things like that and if they succeed if they do it then well the session is free um the, you know they, they don't have to pay again if they if they didn't do the thing um then they have to pay the the bet fee uh and then if they want to go on to the next week then the bet fee automatically doubles right so so typically what happens is that people kind of like they pay a couple of bet fines um like the 10 pound one the 20 pound one the 40 pound one and then this shit starts getting real um and people really have to think about whether they want to continue with the process like actually is this process for me am i able to implement this stuff they really have to think about what is it that I'm saying? What, what am I committing to? Do I definitely think that I can do this? And to a point, it's the old saying, it's like you put your money where your mouth is. So if you're prepared to go out and say that you're going to do this, well, then you, you better make sure that, that you go out and do it. And, and it's a really nice model because what often happens is it makes, either makes people step up, which is, is really good, um, or it makes people acknowledge where they're really at and start to build um, a circle of integrity with themselves. So actually what I say I'm going to do is what I'm actually going to do. And that creates a really nice feedback loop of I said I'm I was going to do a thing. I did a thing and I'm experiencing the results of that. And it gets rid of all of the kind of like the, the nonsensical reward processes of like, oh, if I do this thing, I'm going to treat my children to a holiday. Or if I do this thing, I'm going to get a great new haircut and, and stuff like that. It's like, actually, the reward is simply that you did the thing and you feel great uh, about doing it. Um, so, so it creates a, a nice uh, new loop. So it's a really curious little model. Um, but what I found is I've also found that it really works for me as well, um, because if people are not going to step up and they're going to not tell the truth or they're going to 
not do the things that they say they're going to do and they don't want to pay the money, they don't want to pay the fines, then they can exit. And then I have a space for someone who does want to do the stuff. So it works for them. It works for me. Um, and, and actually, like people can get um, a good deal if, they, uh, if, if they, they really do well. But then it's a nice for me from a business sense. It's a nice um, proof of concept, because if people do what they say they're going to do every month, then they get the results that they really, really want. They can see the value of the coaching that I provide. And so then it's a no brainer that we kind of like then go into a, a rolling uh, a rolling arrangement, which is what we've got right now, Simone, right? Mm -hmm. so, that's um, that's how we started. It was so mm -hmm. easy to get in. And I know people start with bets at different levels. I knew that I had to start, for example, with 100. And that was my initial bet because uh, otherwise I, I would not have had enough skin in the game. Mm -hmm. And I remember when now the fee doubled. I was like, okay, let me put less on the plate. <laughs> so as I, I remember, it's like, oh, I didn't commit my thing. So now my fees doubled. Which means if I don't get it, then it's gonna go to a 200 a session, and that's got me to really get things done and or only commit to what I could manage, which is uh, the other element that I think we should talk about um, over committing because a lot of times, in particular in a lot of accountability groups. You know, there are not really a lot of negative consequences. They, they keep each other accountable. It's just based on your word. There are not negative consequences if you don't do it other than your own negative consequences. In this case, there is more skin in the game because now you are paying more. What's your view in terms of at what level you decide what to commit, what guiding principles you can give to people that might start this journey? Mm. So I usually like say to people start with what you know you can afford to lose um because you're almost certainly going to have a couple of accidents like you're because usually um people that that join unbollocks and work with me have often had a go at self-improvement or starting a business or achieving something several times right so so i've done uh, weight loss in the past i've done people that are struggling to grow their business uh, i've done people or teams that like are struggling to get projects together and and stuff like that but usually like they've had a few goes at it and it hasn't landed so someone has said like oh you know i want to to be um running a business with a hundred thousand pound a month turnover um in six months and then they'll they'll go on a course they'll learn the stuff they'll start applying it and then it falls over then they'll go on a different course they'll try and start applying that and it will start falling over and and, and so on so usually when people come to me the patterns are pretty ingrained uh, and so that's why I, I say to people like just like honestly and, and i think i said this to you simone like are you sure could you afford to lose a hundred pound would you be comfortable losing a hundred pound are you okay with losing a hundred pound um, and if anything, I like I push people down rather than than up because it's it, it's almost inevitable that at some point they're going to break their word or not fulfill. They're going to over um, over reg it. And so usually like I invite people to like start a page where like if it doubled a couple of times, then then it would start to to get warm um, it's it's unpleasant when people start at a really high level because it kind of takes the humor out of it and it, it makes it really serious and heavy from from the outset. So try and keep it light and um, and and fun to to begin with, playful. Um, and then as it builds, then then of course like it just enables us to have more serious and deeper conversations to like unpick it, understand it, figure it out, and then really helps people to think about what they're gonna uh, commit to next. Um, so, so yeah, like the, as, as people explore the program, the commitments get greater, but the conversations get deeper. Um, and we usually get to the stuff that we need to get to, um, in, in the time that we need to get to it. That, that's what I found as part of the process, which is a great segue for the next part of, uh, the, this interview where not everything. So there are different levels of, uh, the work that we did. One is on the action part. Let's say started with Umbolics. I want to take relevant action. I want someone to keep me accountable. I was in a period that I knew I was in a funk. There was something that was not right. And what I thought I needed and that I wanted was 
someone to keep me accountable because I was losing track of things. I was losing the momentum. Uh, then it actually realized that uh, it was uh, one of the toughest moments of my life, which literally was I was in that period. I had anxiety, I had depression. So it was uh, very hard for me to get out of it. And the work that we did together was instrumental for, I would say, recovery, but going back and finding myself again. Because once I was able to find myself again, then everything else kind of moved along because I now had the energy, I regained the passion. I was like, okay, this is now I'm clear about where I'm going next instead of being in this limbo land. And I found the definite, that was in or, how organically it evolved, our relationship going from this is the things that we are doing to who am I and how am I being? And the more we're trusting each other, the more deeper topic like, okay, what's my purpose? What's my meaning? Or uh, what am I really good at? What should I focus on my time on? And something way more personal that it came around. And that's, Ambolox is not for that. That's where we started really working together on this kind of things. So when someone, what's your take when someone comes to you and actually is in a period, is in a really tough moment, is in a really tough spot in their life, whether because their business is not going well or personally they feel lost or they have maybe like a major shakeup with their family. There are so many things that can really shake our ground and mm -hmm. almost give us a slap in the face, put us down. And now we are need to rebuild ourselves. So what's your take when you have this kind of situations? Hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of like, it's often considered like the aha moment um, when, when we're working together. Often when I start people with unbollocks, like people will come with what you might call as symptomatic stuff. So it's kind of like, I'd like more money. I'd like a better relationship. I'd like to look and, uh, better and, and stuff like that. And part of what we do in the, the first part is we just kind of like start to like scratch underneath all of that and just kind of say, yeah, but why? Yeah, but why? And really start to get people to, to think in a different way and start to identify the difference between doing and having and being uh, as, as a person, as, as, as you mentioned, Simone. So as we kind of like, so, so often like when we first start on bollocks, it's kind of like a bit like, um, bit like a genie it's like you know what what are your three wishes um let's get to work on those let's make those happen um and once we sort of but but undertaking that journey will show us lots of different things about ourselves in the process and help us to understand our motivations and our drivers and so on so kind of like it's very, very common that when we get to the the point where we've fulfilled the wishes or or the the things that people want to do in the first instance, um, it's really common that people want to go a bit deeper. Uh, it's really common that people kind of have a moment where they think, "I thought that I wanted this stuff. I thought that th that I wanted to fix this problem, but actually." there's this fundamental thing over here that I hadn't really been paying attention to that actually, if I don't work on that, or if I don't fix that, the problem's just going to keep coming back been a, in a whole load of different ways. Um, so a really good example of that is someone that says, oh, I really want my business to be making lots more money. So we help the business to make lots more money. But then actually, they find out that they're, they're also unhappy about the um, leisure activities that they're doing or the clubs that they belong to and stuff like that. And what we start to realize is that the, the, the money in the business was just simply a symptom of something deeper going on. And then that's when we can start to say like, well, how, what is it that you'd like to achieve in consistency with how you feel or how you are? Um, and we can start to, to kind of, rather than focus on the outside world, we can start to grow and develop something on the inside, which kind of like says that one of my favorite sayings is like, it's really nice when you've got the stuff, but how do you feel when all the stuff goes away? Um, it's really nice if you've got a beautiful house, a great career or business, lots of money, but who are you and how do you feel when all of that goes away? Um, and that's kind of like the, love, the reversal. I love to build on that. Sorry if I can, if I jump mm. in, because 
uh, you said something that really was a big part of the work that we did together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm an incredible big extrovert. All my business and social activity, if you remember, like the, the work that we did was COVID took away basketball, which is a big part of my social life and my leisure activities. It took away personal interactions, like in person. And everything was made online, but I need that energy to that's important for me. So I took away social interaction, traveling, exploring different places. I couldn't travel, so all my life was in a room like everyone else. And everyone responds in a different way. But for me, after a year of that, it knocked me down. And so I remember that even when we were working or rebuilding me up, we had a lot of conversation to say, but what if this happens again? How are you going to... Uh, be happy if basketball is taken again, away again. If uh, your business is taken away. I remember we had a conversation where I had to make peace with the fact of just shutting down GTEx. And that was actually one of making peace with that was one of my turning points. Um, so all these uh, um, parts of, that are when we associate a level of happiness to something which is external to us as well. Or what if that's taken away? How do what's our contingency plan? What's the backup plan? How can we maintain maybe not the same level of happiness, but how we can don't go down in the pit of despair? And I found that process for me to be really valuable because, you know, things were opening up. I was going out. I was going, out, but I became more like avoiding what the real issue was. Like it was still there, but I was now just getting busy with all the things that were taken away without really addressing it. So that was the big part of the work that we did that I would have never done definitely on my own. And you were the only person who actually challenged me on these things. Uh, that's what a mm. big, big point I wanted to make. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so important. And, and also sometimes it's important to make peace with not being at peace. And that's that's really a peculiar thing to say, um, but but a bit like when you're saying so many when you made peace with the idea that you might or could release or sell the business was the moment that you realised that you didn't want to. Does that make sense? So so it's kind of like sometimes you have to allow your mind to go to a place or allow your being to acknowledge the truth of a situation in order to open up the gateways of possibility of what that might be or look like. And so, so when you talk about like, you know, the, the time in COVID, because again, I'm, I'm the same as like an extrovert and, and things like that, is that when you kind of like go, okay, I am prepared to say that I'm sad. I'm prepared to go there and say, I am finding this hard. Then you can then open up all of the gateways, which, enable you to explore what the alternatives might be and when you kind of like you can go out and you can say to people hi i'm having a really hard time right now and it's amazing the people that come in and go oh let's figure this out let's work this out together oh i had no no idea you felt like that but when we kind of like release it and we're like trying to pretend that we're doing okay um or we're kind of like in denial that there's a, a problem here then actually like all of those avenues are kind of closed or we're blind to them. Uh, So I think like it's a really, there's something that's really important to me about like authenticity and honesty about where where you're at. Uh, And that's like a really key part of Unbollocks and the, the kind of ongoing coaching that I do, which is about what is your life and how is your life and how do you actually make these things work with your actual life? So if we go back to like the, the self development stuff, it's when you're trying to fit in the just five steps to make 25,000 pounds a month in amongst the crying kids and your full-time job and your partner that doesn't understand what you're trying to do and stuff like that. Those five steps feel like really big steps, like, you know, like those massive ones that you need a rope to climb up and, and stuff like that. And so like, once we kind of like, acknowledge say like this is where i am and this is who i am and i accept that then actually we can say well what is in my gift what is in my power to to start moving on yeah and uh, which which now gets me to the next uh, to the next segment of this interview because uh, one uh, talking about 
one of the moments uh, where we worked on what is in my power, what is uh, that I can control right now, was actually going and uh, finding a couple of things. One is uh, um, a sense of purpose uh, or mission that uh, I have lost, uh, or instead of saying I've lost, that has changed. Mm -hmm. And that is a core to me, but independent from the work that I do. And that was also another big shift to who am I without the business? Who am I, what's my purpose without the work that I do? Because I can, it doesn't have to be linked to it. Uh, so that was a, a big part. And then once we identified that, then I was able to create space and I got myself to a stable position. Things were going well. I was happy again and I was productive again and I would see things moving forward. So I got a good level of stability. That got me to think, okay, what's the next level now for me? Because uh, who is going to be the next version of Simone? And one of the things that I found very difficult is uh, to keep myself accountable to the new version of me because it's a different, uh, it's a different dynamic. One, one level is accountability to who you are right now and what are your current responsibilities at the moment, which is one layer. But then you have another layer, which is uh, accountability to do the things that will make you the person that you want to be. And so I remember that we worked a lot on uh, what's going to be the next version of me, what are going to be the elements of the next version of me, what are going to be the activities and the metrics that we need to keep track of. And having that weekly support, that ongoing support of being reminded, in this case we called it Simone 6.0, but being reminded every week of who is Simone, Simone 6.0? How do we realize that Simone 6.0 is happening? So how we are going to find out, so practically, and what activities do we need to track every week, not only that keep the current level of Simone going, but it will integrate now the Simone 6.0. And having that weekly check-in with this consistent reminder, that helps me not go back to what I'm used to. Because I'm now at this current level. So that, that I go on autopilot like that. There are different activities. And Simone 6.0 is a different person. So I need to ingrain new behaviors and new things. And, new, and that I found really powerful. So let's talk about now when someone is ready to, so they got to a stable point. And now they're ready to see, okay, I've consolidated this new level of me. I'm ready to see what's next. What are your views and what's your approach? Mm, yeah, that's that's a really good one. Um, you mentioned a lot of them, Simone, is <clears throat> you have to understand what that version of you is from like every angle. So what, how does that person wake up? How does that person go to sleep? How does that person interact with the people that they're already interacting with, right? So how does Simone 6.0 interact with everyone that he's got around him with Simone 5.0? Because sometimes like personal development can like go, you can be this amazing person. And then all of the people that you love and care about in your life are like, who the hell is this guy? Like, you know, it's, uh, and, and so on. So you've got to take care of the things that you've built so far. And there's a lot of work to be done to understand what are the structures that are supportive that you need to keep, grow and enhance but also what are the structures that it's time to release and let go of. There's a lot of habit change in there. Um, and, and there's also a lot of self-forgiveness in understanding that you're going to regress to Simone 5.0 sometimes. So, so you're going to be 6.0 and you might have a great day when you're like, yeah, I'm Simone 6.0. Nothing can stop me being 6.0 until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning when Simone 5.0 definitely shows up and wants to spoil the show. Um, and so, so it's, it's about the world of like, how do you internalize it? So we did a lot of wor work around statements around when someone asks you who you are or what you stand for or how you behave and stuff. You shouldn't have to like look in your phone to remember what that is. You shouldn't have to like go, I am Simone 6. Point. It's like it's like it's like it's it's not it's not you, right? So you've got to kind of like do a lot of work to like really understand it from every angle, and also test it, like play it out. And and I'm a big fan of testing. So for example, if you say like, ah, oh, I'm gonna. So if we take Simone 6.0 for example, Simone 6.0 is like, I'm gonna exercise every day for seven days without fail. I'm like, okay, cool. Should we test that first? Should we test it before we decide that that's 
who it is. And actually, we would do it, and there will be a week where Simone would, would do it fantastically, and then a week, not so much. So, so because other stuff would come into play. And then we look at, for example, like how do those bits conflict with each other? So how does the exercise version of Simone 6.0 fit in with the I want to travel all the time Simone 6.0 that fits in with that I need to have time for sales all the time at Simone 6.0 and I must not forget my wife Simone 6.0 um, and and so on right so so actually like once all those bits begin to land we can start to look at realistically what Simone 6.0 is and we can begin to honor those from a, an authentic and honest place um, and then as Simone says we just get into a set of relentless patterns of repetition who are you how did you do this week let's look at the metrics and so on so we we just we have a really crude system where it, we just score it out of 10 like each week it's like so only how are you doing on your meditation this week ian it's a six okay slight dip from last week what are we going to do about that so it's really really crude and then what we do is we kind of like keep an eye on the metrics and just make sure that there's nothing more than a bit of a dip. Like we can tolerate a bit of a dip, but if there's like a kind of downward slide, then we need to address that. But typically we just work on the lowest score. So, so if there's something in that list of metrics and that's been consistently the lowest score for two or three weeks, we zone in on it and we focus on it and say, right, what are the, what are the ways of being? What are the activities? What are the actions that, that we think could begin to, to, to turn that corner and then at some point that metric will lift um and something else will be the lower metric and then we kind of like agree like what's an acceptable level so as a human being it's unlikely that simone 6.0 is going to be running 10 out of 10 on every single metric every single day of every single week so again we have like a tolerance point we have like what we consider like an acceptable point um and we know when to take action and, and when when not and that's what i found incredibly powerful this entire process where it helps me be accountable and integrate this new level of me while keeping Simone 5.0 because there are still a lot of responsibilities and things that Simone 5.0 has to do while getting ready and building this new version and not losing track of it. It's just easy to get, it's, not, it's human nature to get back into what's comfortable. So getting pulled back. Mm -hmm. And this helps me always to making sure that when there is the pullback, there is also the pulling forward. And the pulling mm -hmm. forward is the, the sessions that we have. So as you, as, as you can see now, we did this interview almost like showing the journey that I had with Ian, because I'm sure some of you will be listening right now or watching and say, oh, I can see myself at that point of uh, the embolics, or I can see myself in this really dark spot and I need more like help on finding out who I am again. And Or you need help to create a new version of yourself. And there is a this wave and depending on where you are, you can go from one to the other is there are different layers to the work that Ian does. And that's why um, I, I call him the person who sorts me out because <laughs> depending on what I need, if I'm in a dark place, I know that there is a, a layer of work that we can do in that stage. If I'm ready to spring forward because I'm in a really good place and I know what I'm, I want to do next, then I can have that accountability and support. So uh, if you are interested, if you say, actually, I would love to see how, how I can work with Ian. Um, Ian, I know you have a, a kind of like a two-step process that for someone to be introduced to you. So can you mm -hmm. please explain while I'm going to just disappearing from the moment from the camera because I'm going to put my email in a banner that is going to show up. So then if anyone is interested while Ian is explaining, my email is going to appear on the screen. So then you can email me and I can put you in touch with Ian. So Ian, over to you. How does, if someone wants to start this process with you, how does it work? All right, nice one. Thanks, Simone. Uh, so what happens is that we kind of get together. So it's like a, a two-step a two -step process. And, um, and what happens is on the first time we come together, maybe over coffee, over a Zoom call, something like that. It's usually between an hour and two hours. And we just talk about what's going on for you. Um, and we talk about it from a lot of angles uh, and we, we explore it from uh, a number of different ways so that we can really work out what the underlying stuff is that's, um, that's going on. And really, my goal in that session is to help people have some paradigm shifts to see that what they're approaching is surmountable. Uh, what they're looking at is actually 
nothing more than like a habit or um, uh, a way of being that, that can be uh, overcome and, and explored from enough, a, a number of angles. And we just come up with some ideas. So we'll workshop it. Um, facilitation is one of our specialities. Uh, and we'll kind of like just come up with some really cool stuff that you can begin to experiment and play with. So there's no bets at this point. It's just a kind of like, hey, here's some really good stuff that you can go away and try. And really, it's just a proof of concept, right? This is the thing, is that this is my opportunity to say, I can get inside of your brain. I can see the mechanics of what's going on in there. And I've got a few ideas as to how we can begin to unpick that. So you then go away, you apply some of those ideas, and then we meet up again and we say, hey, how did it go? And, and you are and say, it was great. This is really cool. Or you say, no, it wasn't so good. And so we, we, try, we try something else. Um, usually people come back with some, some good results. Then in the second session, like once we've got some feedback and there's a nice feedback loop around like how it's gone, um, whether it's been successful and, and things like that, we then look at, well, what happens next? Um, and there's, there's different ways that people go forward next. So my goal is that people should, number one, understand their problem from a whole new different angle and in a whole load of new ways that they didn't see it before. Number two, they should get some actionable stuff that they can go away and test and get some impact uh, and, and some results from. And number three, they get a plan. Um, that plan might be a plan that they can just go solo with. So it's like, okay, cool. Well, you've, you've got those results from these things. Then the next steps naturally look like this. And some people go solo and they have a great time. Um, and they just drop me an email from time to time or a Facebook note saying, hey, and it's going really well and so on. Some people say like, this sounds good. I really liked working with you. Um, I'd like to do some more stuff. And then we just say to them, okay, well, this is the current get in fee for Unbollocks, um, the, the bet process. If you want in, this is the get in fee and, uh, and we, can, we can get betting and we can like test some stuff every week and we just continue to, to get growing. Um, and then the other way is that some people say like, well, I'm not sure that I need like something quite as bespoke as that, but I do really value the accountability. So we have like a group getting model where there's like a kind of group where people can come together, hang out together um, and hold each other accountable and, and so on. I usually encourage people to go for the one to one stuff in the first instance, just to kind of like get their head into the way of being like that. Um, but again, it's, it's not affordable for everyone. Uh, so we make sure that the people have got different angles in which they can get into. So and then from there, after they've like gone through the, the kind of betting stage, then again, we just have another catch up. I think we did it like after three months, Simone, something like that. Yeah. And then and then basically say, OK, again, what, what do you want to happen now? Um, and, and sometimes people say this was enough. I'm, I'm good. Sometimes people say, I love it. Let's keep it going. And we just kind of like turn it into a, a rolling thing. Um, so, um, yeah, some people have been working with me for years, some people a few months. Um, there's never like there's never uh, in terms of like kind of authenticity and and stuff like that. There's never a lock in. So that's like something that's that's for me as a coach is that the only way that you would be stuck with me is because you love the results that you're getting um, and you can't peel yourself away from the services that I provide. Like there's never kind of like you've got to commit to six months or 12 months or anything like that. All of the fees are always up front. Um, it's like, this is how much it costs to get into this bit. And you, and then you just do it. This is how much it gets into to our bollocks. This is how much it would cost you on a monthly basis if you want to work together. Um, and again, I find that's really nice because it means that if people are not getting results, they don't have to stick around. Yeah, it's uncommon. But 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 if, if it were to happen, that would be the case. Or if people don't want to work with me anymore, no problem. It just opens up another space for someone who really does want to work. You know, like I, I just see no value in in like lock ins and, and stuff like that. And my, my recommendation is to take you an app of the initial offer of the two, the first two sessions uh, to check in if he has capacity. So that up front is one hundred fifty pound. Two for the first the two session where you have the in-depth consultation plus the session later, which is uh, the first one. And then after that, you can decide if you want to move with a plan on yourself or you want to keep working with Ian in the different options that he mentioned. But for £150, which is about like $180, uh, if you're looking in dollars, then uh, it, it is a no-brainer. Check with Ian. Uh, so first of all, if you're interested, uh, you can see my email here which is simone at gtex.org.uk. So simone at gtex.org.uk. 
That's my email is also on the screen. You can check it out. Send me an email and say, hey, Simone, make an introduction to Ian. I'll make an introduction to Ian. And as you know, it's, two, it's 150 pounds for the initial consultation plus one session. And then you, after the strategy, you can decide you want to move forward or not. My recommendation is to take it. You literally have nothing to lose just to gain. And my experience working with Ian has been transform transformative. It was not, it's not something that happened overnight. It's not something that uh, we, like we, I went from the dep really depressed to now I'm on top of the world. Like it was a, a process, but that's what I like about Ian is that everything it does is a process which is sustainable. So it's more interested in making sure that the change and transformation is sustainable rather than get a quick buzz that lasts maybe for a week and now you're back to where you were before. Uh, so if you are committing to the process and you want to explore how that transformational process can be, then send me an email, simone at gtex.org.uk. I'll put you in touch with Ian. And then at that point, you decide. You have a chat. You decide if it's something you want to move forward with uh, or not. And, um, and my recommendation is to take this option. Any final word, any final comment, Ian, before we wrap up or we're good for today? Yeah, just if you want to change yourself and or improve yourself or, or get something done the, the the fast stuff is good if you can tolerate it and and you can do it but if you've done it more than once like if you've taken a course more than once and and you didn't get there or if you've tried to like fix a habit or achieve a goal like more than once and and you didn't get there um yeah just be a bit more gentle with yourself, reach out, like have a conversation with me or just anyone really um, that, that would kind of like explore accountability and stuff like that. And um, yeah, yeah, it, it really helps to, to get some off. Like just like, Sim just like I've helped Simone, I had a coach who, who, who took me through a really, really similar process. Uh, and it, it's kind of like how I, how I chose to, to get into the method that I did. So um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's always worth it. Always worth it. All right, Ian, thank you again for all the support that you have given me over the years and also you have given GTEx because we have not explored all the all the stuff that you had for GTEx, but this is, can be another episode here. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's just focus on the personal level. And uh, thank you again. And for everyone, make sure you reach out, simone at gtex.org.uk. I can connect you with Ian and then you can see how you can work with him. Until next time, always remember, together we grow exponentially. Ciao. Ciao.